Welcome to worship at Community Lutheran Church this June 21st, 2020. And this is the third Sunday of Pentecost. Earlier this week, there were some significant events that we celebrated as a nation. On June 17th, we remembered the fifth anniversary of the Emmanuel Nine, the nine African-American church members of the Emmanuel uh, AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina, who were murdered by a white gunman. We remember them and honor their memory and we commit ourselves to the work of racial justice and equality. Also, this week we remember Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a significant holiday in uh, the lives of African Americans and those who were descended from slaves. Juneteenth is the oldest national celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. Dating back to 1865, it was on June 19th that Union soldiers, led by Major General Gordon Granger, landed at Galveston, Texas, with news that the war had ended and that enslaved people were now free. Note that this was about two and a half years after President Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which had been officially stated on January 1st, 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation had little impact on the Texans due to the minimal number of Union troops to enforce the new executive order. However, with the surrender of General Lee in April of 1865 and the arrival of General Granger's regiment, the forces were finally strong enough to influence and overcome the resistance. Juneteenth is a reminder that it's not enough for us to just say something action needs to happen and that often change can take a long time especially here in the united states racial justice and inequality is going to take a long time and so we remember juneteenth as a day of celebration but also a day reminded that change needs to be marked with patience We do have a few announcements. We wanted to remind everyone that this Sunday is Father's Day. And we give a special thanks to all the fathers in our congregation, all the father figures that we have had, and most importantly, to God our Father in heaven. Our food pantry will be open on the first of the month, and we uh, are thankful for all the folks that have volunteered and have given money and funds and helped out uh, to feed families, and we will continue to be doing that. The flowers have been given uh, by Wayne Schomberger and Debbie Clank in honor of Debbie Clank's mother, Estelle Badger. We also wanted to celebrate Bob and Sally Drunken Miller, Miller's anniversary. Happy anniversary. And lastly, we are reminded that our beloved member, Carol Clark, passed away last Saturday. And so near the end of this service, we, are, we will be remembering her and honoring her and commending her to God. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The call to confession is a call to experience God's mercy. In admitting the truth of our lives to our loving Creator, we open ourselves to the experience of grace and healing. Trusting in that divine love, let us pray first in silence. Pray with me. Holy One, at times when we hear the bad news of the world, 
It is as though we have been in the middle of a bad dream, and then we turn over again and go back to sleep, ignoring the plight of others. It is hard to see tragedy and suffering. It is hard to admit whatever responsibility we might have in the plagues and systems of this evil world. It is hard to work for the good when the good seems so far off. So help us, dear Lord. Give us courage to see clearly. Give us strength to do our part, to confront evil, violence, bigotry, hate, and greed. Give us grace to forgive others and ourselves, and give us faith to follow you. This is our prayer, offered in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, calls us to follow him. And he will not lead us astray. His path is one of forgiveness and renewal. Know that you are forgiven, and so you are ready to go out and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Our hymn is Lift High the Cross. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth.
Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you in all things, to have courage when the cost is high, to have endurance and strength when we are weak, to labor faithfully, knowing that your rewards are rich, even if we can't see them immediately. Help us to take up the cross and follow you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The faith question for June 21st, 2020. In what ways can conflict be a positive experience that allows all sides to be transformed? You can share your answers on Facebook and YouTube, and you can discuss them at our 10 a.m. Zoom coffee hour. The first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 20, 7 through 13. But first, an introduction. First, Jeremiah accuses of forcing God into a ministry that only brings him contempt and persecution. Yet Jeremiah is confident that God will be a strong protector against his enemies and commits his life into God's hands. And now the reading. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out, and I must shout, Violence and destruction! For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him, or speak any more of him in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with it, holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, Terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will not be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. This ends the reading. Today's psalm comes from chapter 69, verses 7 through 18. Surely, for your sake, I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. The second lesson is from the sixth chapter of Romans, beginning with the first verse. But first, an introduction. In baptism, we were incorporated into the reality of Christ's death and resurrection. We have been made new in Christ through his death and resurrection to live freed from sin. And now the reading. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too 
might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whosoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. And Jesus continued teaching his disciples. The disciple isn't greater than the teacher. The slave isn't greater than the master. It's quite enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. If they called the master of the house Beelzebub, then what are they going to call his family? Don't be afraid of them. Nothing is hidden, you see, that won't come to light. Nothing is secret that won't be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear whispered in your ears, announce from the roofs of the houses. Don't be afraid of people who kill the body, but can't kill the soul. The one you should be afraid of is the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. How much would you get for a couple of sparrows? A single copper coin, if you're lucky. And not one of them falls to the ground without your father knowing about it. When it comes to you, why? Every hair on your head is counted. So don't be afraid. You're worth much more than a great many sparrows. So everyone who owns up in front of others to being on my side, I will own them before my Father in heaven. But anyone who disowns me in front of others, I will disown them before my Father in heaven. Don't think it's my job to bring peace on earth. I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to divide a man from his father, a daughter from her mother, a daughter-in-law from her mother-in-law. Yes, you'll find your enemies inside your own front door. If you love your father or mother more than me, you don't deserve me. If you love your son or daughter more than me, you don't deserve me. Anyone who doesn't pick up their cross and follow me doesn't deserve me. If you find your life, you'll lose it. And if you lose your life because of me, you'll find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father in heaven and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is an interesting part of Matthew's Gospel. He had sent... He is sending out the disciples to go out and preach and teach and heal in the midst of Judea. And he's offering them uh, some wisdom and comfort and other things. The, the writer of Matthew probably took many different parts of kind of Jesus' um, in sayings of encouragement and put them all here in this chapter. But one thing is clear when we read this is that to follow Jesus is not easy. And when we follow Jesus, it might lead to conflict. That the world might disagree with what Jesus is and is doing. And we know that's true because Jesus was crucified on the cross. We have come to view um, the cross in kind of a uh, rose-colored glasses. We view the cross as something nice, and, and we forget that the cross was a symbol of terror. 
The Romans would crucify somebody on a cross as a sign for don't mess with Rome. Don't mess with our empire. Don't mess with us. Or this will happen to you. And so for us who follow Jesus, and for us who are called to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, it is a scary thing to think about. What does it mean to pick up a cross if the cross was a sign of oppression and intimidation? Jesus loved being with the outcasts and the sinners. And these people were the oppressed and on the margins. And so when we are asked to take up our cross, I think it means maybe we're going to have to stand, take a stand for those who are oppressed and on the margins. And maybe people we don't necessarily agree with sometimes, but deserve to have their humanity and their dignity. There's a, a wonderful theologian, James Cone, and he talks about, he wrote a book called The Cross and the Lynching Tree. In the past two weeks or so, we've heard in the news that there have been young black men that have been hanged. In the United States, there has been a long history of using lynchings, of hanging people from trees as a sign of intimidation and oppression. And so the lynching tree and the cross have a lot in common. Now more than ever, the church needs to be clear about what it stands for. Jesus cared for and loved the marginalized and the oppressed and the outcasts. And sometimes that stood up and against those in power whoever they may be. And the church needs to stake, take a stand. Are we going to say that life matters, whether it be black or brown or white? Or are we going to only say that some lives matter? We are called to take a stand with Christ. And that sometimes it might cause divisions in our lives. Maybe even within the church or our own families. But that is the call of Jesus. The call to follow him to the cross. To look oppression and intimidation in the eye and say, no. The cross is the symbol of the Christian church, not because he just died on the cross, but because Christ rose from the dead and prove that the sign of oppression and intimidation of the cross did not have the last word. So let us look to the cross. Let us look to the let us look to Jesus. Let us find ways to Take up our cross. 
not just the little sins that maybe all of us bear, the little sins and pains, but the big cross of systemic racism and income inequality and intimidation through violence. Let us not let those have the last word, but let us declare with Christ that he has the last word in the resurrection. Let us be a people of the cross and of resurrection. We are a people of hope. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our needy world, responding to each petition with the words from today's psalm, Your love is kind. O oh God, Father in heaven, hold your church in your loving arms. Protect believers who face persecution for your sake. Bless the work of televangelists and teachers like Onesimus Nesbitt, whom we commemorate today, as they translate their faith into other languages. Strengthen our pastors, deacons, and church councils for their ministry during these troubled times. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is kind. kind. O God, our provider, here in the north, the summer solstice reminds us of your care for the whole creation. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Feed all your creatures, both animals and humans, with the sustenance they need for life. Guide us to sources of energy that do not destroy the earth you have created. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, our ruler, inspire our president, our governors, and our legislators to work for justice for all. Lead us to ways of life that are free from racial and ethnic prejudice. Strengthen the world's democracies and sustain those who are working to secure free and safe elections. Give a home to refugees. Form our military and our police to maintain peace and inhibit violence. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is kind. kind. O God, our physician, bring healing to all who are sick and suffering. Preserve the world from more waves of the coronavirus and guide researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Protect those whose jobs expose them to contagion. Support our healthcare workers. We remember before you those we name here. Lift up all those in our Facebook and YouTube comments. We lift up our local EMTs and fire department and policemen. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is is kind. O God, our peacemaker, inhibit each household on the land with your powerful peace. Train us to live together in harmony especially when quarantined together. Nourish marriages and sustain extended families. Protect children from every harm. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is is kind. O God, our source of life, bless all fathers and father figures as they faith both long-standing and emerging family needs. Comfort those who long to be with fathers and for home, and for those whom this might be a difficult day. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is is kind. kind. O God, our beloved, receive the petitions of our own hearts. 
You lift up the disciples here in this place who are in need of your hand of healing. The family of Carol Clark as they mourn. Madeline, who is receiving uh, transfusions for childhood cancer. For Bill and Lynn Hinkleman as they face dementia and changes in their life at this time. For all those dealing with cancer and other illnesses. For all those who have impending surgeries and other procedures. We lift them up for your hand of healing. Hear us and help us, O God. Your Your love love is kind. kind. Lord, we lift up our military serving both here and abroad. We lift up our law enforcement. They face difficult days ahead. We pray that you would instill in them the conviction to always work towards peace. so that violence does not have to be an option. We pray for wisdom and patience and courage. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, our beginning and our end, we bless you for all of our forebears and our family and faith and those who have lived and died in you. Especially this week, we remember Carol Clark. Remind us of their sacrifices and their faith. And at the end, bring us to them in your household of joy. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love love is kind. Receive these prayers of God and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word of God. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through your life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need Awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will take a moment to honor and say goodbye to Carol Clark. I had asked uh, one of Carol's dear friends, um, to, to write a note in, in memory, and, and uh, I asked Ned Troutman. Ned and Rose were very good friends with Tom and Carol for a long time. And they said early in their conversation, um, they realized that Ned and Carol had, a very, uh, had, had been born the same year, and they were about six months apart. And I don't, she, uh, Ned said he didn't know who started it, but they, um, they kept on sending the same birthday card back and forth for a few years. And he always used to refer to her as Carol the Elder because she was six months older than Ned. He said that card um, has probably long since... Uh, gone to pieces and and the tradition stopped, but that is one of the few memories that he has of Carol and that the joy that she brought. I'd like to read uh, for you a few words from the family um, from Carol's obituary. Carol Lewis Clark, born June 6, 1933, died June 13, 2020. died in her home in Dagsboro in the company of loved ones and friends. 
There's an off saying that's well known, you give what you get. Carol gave and she got. She was loved by anyone and everyone who met her because she loved unfettered and unconditionally. She never had a conversation when she wanted to talk about herself more than she wanted to hear about you. She was a blessing and a great gift to all who crossed her path. Her smile, her laugh, her sunny attitude made family and friends and even strangers smile and laugh and feel, well, sunnier. Imagine the ability to make everyone feel better. That is Carol's legacy. The last time I saw Carol and was able to give her communion and pray with her, despite being in pain, she still had a smile on her face. And now we have some special music.
Let us commend Carol to God. In Romans 14.8, Paul reminds us, if we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So that whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. In baptism, Carol was claimed as Christ's own, and for this we give thanks. Amen. Let us remember Carol Clark. We entrust her now and forever to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Carol. In baptism, she was claimed as a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of all the saints before her, and into your shining presence. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is a blessing for all those who mourn. Our Lord Jesus tells us, blessed are those that mourn. Be blessed in your tears and your sorrow. Be blessed in your remembrance of the one that you have lost. Be blessed in the name of Jesus, who abides with us through our pain, who in due time wipes away our tears, and who promises us joy and eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Spirit of God, fall afresh on us. We're reminded that we would love to connect with you. And uh, we have our 10 a.m. Zoom coffee hour, which is right after the premiere of our uh, YouTube service. And that the Zoom coffee hour is at 10 a.m. And a reminder that um, you can uh, give online and you can also find out more about what is happening here at Community Lutheran Church at clc19945.org. Have a blessed Sunday.